the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of humans? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. Take it from Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age, while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Good will toward men. 
My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this is indeed uh, not only a joyous time, time for God's people to get together and reflect upon the birth of the Savior, the coming of our Lord, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, but it's also a rather unusual event this year. Unlike many of our Christmas celebrations in the past, filled with joy and peace, this year, I have to say, is quite different because uh, I'm sure, as you have noticed, we've never had a Christmas Eve where everybody had to wear masks. We've never had a Christmas Eve with the virus that has so afflicted the world that our leaders have even entertained and suggested that God's people should not get together for worship as we are doing here tonight. This is indeed a different Christmas Eve. And yet, the message is the same. I'm thankful that the Supreme Court <laughs> did overrule some of our leaders and say, no, <laughs> you can't say no to the worship of God's people, to anybody. The worship, worship is a freedom assured to us by the Constitution. First Amendment. Wow. We thank God for the blessings he gives us every day, and especially tonight, the opportunity to be together and to worship and to sing his praises and to remember what Christmas is all about. The God who loves us, as this sign here says, a God who cares more than we could ever know, a God who is with us, Emmanuel, with us through all that we face in this world, and has come, indeed, has come, to bring us peace. A famous man, wise man, once said that the gospel is so clear, there is little need of learned interpretation. It is only necessary to ponder it well, to contemplate it, to take it completely into our hearts. None will derive more benefit from it than those whose hearts hold still and who divest themselves of material considerations and concentrate diligently upon it. This lesson is like the sun in a placid pond, but in a rushing current, current it cannot be seen as well, nor can it warm up the water as much. So if you wish to be illumined and warm here, to see God's mercy and wondrous deeds, so that your heart is filled with fire and light and becomes reverent and joyous, then go to where you may be still and impress the picture deep into your heart. You will find no end of wondrous deeds. Needless to say, that is why we're here together tonight to simply take time out of the heckness, hectic and crazy world in which we live, a world riddled with sin, with anger, frustration, grief, and to rejoice. Rejoice in the message that we heard many times before. Rejoice in the message that brings us together week after week, day after day, all year long. Christmas is not just one day a year. It's 365 days a year. 
right? Yep. Some of you know where that's from. <laughs> the famous Dickens A Christmas Carol. Uh, the ghost of Christmas present said that to him. And indeed, it is true. Christmas is 365 days a year, all year long. God's people rejoice in the gift of a Savior. All year long, we have the greatest message of all to tell the world, a world which this evening, tonight, tomorrow, every day, every day of the year needs to hear. Our world needs to hear the simple message of the angel Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people, all people. For unto you is born this night in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And the angels sang. The world sang. The time had come. God kept his promise. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill toward men that's not exactly what's written in your bulletin today a lot of uh, our modern translations unfortunately miss the point it is for all people glory to god in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests may be very misleading i dare say and is for some it implies that some of some people receive God's blessing of peace and others maybe not. It's true that those who reject the Lord and choose to live without him, and there are many in our world today who do just that, they have difficulty if it's even possible to find true peace. God without man is still God. Man without God is nothing. I have a plaque that my sister gave me when I was ordained a long time ago. Can't even tell you how long ago that was. Well, it was uh, some 45 years ago. And I still have that plaque. And it's still true. If God's people, if anybody in this world is to have peace, it is through faith in Jesus Christ. But that message is for all, not only to men on whom his favor rests, but for all people. It's the good news the angels spoke. The good news of a Savior for all people. The fullness of time had come. God kept his promise. We're here tonight, reflecting on that glorious promise in the birth of the Savior, the one who came and is coming again. Many in our world today, unfortunately, have difficulty finding that peace. And it's not surprising, there is so much in our world that keeps us from having peace. Satan. I have to say, Satan was working overtime this year, trying to keep God's people from having peace. You have no idea what this week has been like. Uh, you can check with some of our leaders here uh, to know what the, what's gone on this week. Um, the, the, the choirs, uh, I have to give a lot of credit to the people who have stepped up. This, this service, uh, as I mentioned, uh, to, to Dawn as we were standing in the back there just a few moments ago. How I uh, uh, wonder where everybody is. Uh, some people were at the earlier service and sure, certainly I'm sure some people have come to the later service and she reminded me that, uh, you know, up until now, those were the only two services we had. This whole, this service is new and different and unique uh, because of the circumstances, yes. People have difficulty finding peace. Many people are lonely at this time of year. We know it. And that's why uh, 
Trish and social ministry board was willing to even open up uh, tomorrow night to have, uh, have Maureen's Haven here at the church on Christmas evening, Christmas Day evening, only because of the virus that couldn't take place. But we know that there are people who need, they need to hear this message. They need to hear of a God who is present in their lives. So many people don't know that. So many people are agonizing over the effects of sin. It's affecting their lives. So many people are, are challenged with tests, sickness, illness, disease, tests that people have to go through. They don't know what to expect. And they're having trouble finding peace. Some people know what to expect. And that too robs many of peace. We have the message. We know God kept his promise. We know where true peace is to be found. Christmas doesn't mean that everybody must be in their own home or with their own family at this time. The CDC has reminded us of that. It's a different kind of Christmas. It doesn't mean everybody will be home. It's about a young couple, far away from home. So far away that they had to make a hard, dusty journey to a place called Bethlehem. And they didn't have anybody there to take them in. They had to spend the night in a stable with the animals. Christmas is about shepherds who weren't home at night because they were out working, like a lot of people even tonight are doing, in order to help others and protect people from danger. It's about wise men who traveled for months to catch a glimpse of a little baby. And it's about, most of all, about God's Son, who left his heavenly home in order to enter our sin-filled world. Christmas doesn't mean everything's going to turn out just fine. We know that sometimes God says yes to our wishes and desires, and sometimes he says no. And I've said for years, if God says no to what you're wanting, it's only because he has something better in mind. He has something better for you, and that's what faith is all about. Trusting God, letting God be God. And that's why I've often said, when we pray, don't just pray for what you want. Pray for God to give you what you need. And pray that God doesn't give you what you want if it's not what you need. <laughs> Christmas doesn't mean we get everything we want. Mary and Joseph had to go into exile in Egypt in order to avoid Herod's army. The wise men had to trick the king and go back home by a different road. And the baby, of course, started a trip that led him to the cross and a grave. And thankfully also an empty tomb. Christmas doesn't mean that everybody gets just what they always wanted. God's gift of his son was not what everyone in the world always wanted and still isn't what people want. Maybe what they need, but not what they want. Jesus was despised and rejected by his own people, ignored by many who never took the time to find out who he really was and is, and also hated hated by many who knew who he was and would not let him in to their hearts. Christmas is more than just the temporal blessings that we exchange at this time of year, the gifts under the tree, the tinsel on the tree, and all the good wishes that we have for one another. Christmas is about God's love for you and for me and for the world and his assurance 
that nothing can ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We may have to face, and we will, as Jesus said, the tribulations. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Cast all your cares upon him, Peter said, for he cares for you. This is what moves us to rejoice. This is what moves us to sing with the angels, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. This is what moves us to find ways of bringing life and joy and peace to others. Let me just conclude by sharing with you a story, a story, because as I've told many people here who have gotten to know me, those of you who may be new here tonight, the fact is, I am retired <laughs> and enjoying every minute of it. I will say, I will say, we're having a good time together, sharing the love of Christ, the joy of the Lord, and uh, I guess like many retired pastors who've been around a little while, I have a few stories to tell. So this is a story about not one baby in the manger, but two. Two babes in a manger. In 1994, two Americans answered an invitation from the Russian Department of Education to teach morals and ethics based on biblical principles in the public schools. They were invited to teach at prisons, businesses, the fire and police departments, and a large orphanage. About 100 boys and girls who had been abandoned, abused, and left in the care of a government-run program were in the orphanage. They related the following story in their own words. It was nearing the holiday season, 1994, time for an orphan to hear for the first time the traditional story of Christmas. We told them about Mary and Joseph arriving in Bethlehem. <clears throat> Finding no room in the inn, the couple went to a stable where the baby Jesus was born and placed in a manger. Throughout the story, the children and orphanage staff sat in amazement as they listened. Some sat on the edges of their stools, trying to grasp every word. Completing the story, we gave the children three small pieces of cardboard <clears throat> to make a crude manger. Each child was given a small paper square cut from yellow napkins I had brought with me. No colored paper was available in the city. Following instructions, the children tore the paper and carefully laid strips in the manger for straw. Small squares of flannel cut from a worn-out nightgown an American lady was throwing away as she left Russia, were used for the baby's blanket. <clears throat> a doll-like baby was cut from tan felt we had just brought from the United States. The orphans were busy assembling their mangers as I walked among them to see if they needed any help. All went well <clears throat> until I got to one table where little Misha sat. He looked to be about six years old and had finished his project. As I looked at the little boy's manger, I was startled to see not one, but two babies in the manger. Quickly I called for the translator to ask the lad why there were two babies in the manger. Crossing his arms in front of him and looking at his completed manger scene, the child began to repeat the story very seriously. For such a young boy who had he related the happenings accurately until he came to the part where Mary put the baby Jesus in the manger. <clears throat> then little Misha started to ad lib. He made up his own ending to the story, as he said, And when Maria laid the baby in the manger, Jesus looked at me and asked me 
if I had a place to stay. I told him I have no mom and I have no pop, so I don't have any place to stay. Then Jesus told me I could stay with him, but I told him I couldn't because I don't have a gift to give him like everybody else did. But I wanted to stay with Jesus so much, so I thought about what I had that maybe I could use for a gift. I thought maybe if I kept him warm, that would be a good gift. So I asked Jesus, if I keep you warm, will that be a good enough gift? And Jesus said, if you keep me warm, that will be the best gift anybody ever gave me. So I got in the manger, and then Jesus looked at me, and he told me, I could stay with him for always. As little Misha finished his story, his eyes brimmed full of tears that splashed down his little cheeks, putting his hands over his face. His head dropped to the table, and his shoulders shook as he sobbed and sobbed. This little boy had found someone who would never abandon nor abuse him, someone who would stay with him for always. Our God came into our world keeping the promise he made to bring us comfort and peace for always. He has promised I will never leave you nor forsake you. Lord, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. We have heard year after year, and this year especially, the good news. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And it's this message which moves us, especially tonight, through all of our heartaches, our pains, our agony, our anxiety and frustrations, through all that we face, it moves us to also sing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace good will toward men. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray for the people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to the news. Lord God Almighty, we come before you on this most holy night in glory of the wonder of majesty of the Incarnation. The Savior of the nations has come, and with joy we greet our newborn King. Let the proclamation of his birth sound forth throughout the world. Give to your church faithful pastors who proclaim the good tidings of his birth, and give to your people willing ears to hear and believe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the birth of your Son, you have signaled the beginning of a new creation. While we still live in a world wracked by the ravages of sin, we know that the final victory is yours. Watch over and keep safe emergency workers in all remote locations. Keep them from their families this evening for the well-being of our family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the birth of your Son, you have visited and redeemed your people. Continue to visit those who are lonely, sick, recovering, or near death. Let your presence be a comfort to them and give them the perseverance until that time you grant healing, relief, deliverance, and peace. 
Lord, take your mercy. Hear To the birth of your Son, and by his death and resurrection, you will reconcile the world to yourself. Because ever mindful that Jesus is for all people, and give us an opportunity to tell others the good news of his coming, so that they can join in the praise of your holy name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the birth of your eternal Son, who is of one substance with you, you visited mankind, and so your eternal Godhead is bound to the body and blood he gives us in the sacrament of the altar. Grant faith to all who receive this gift, that with sins forgiven and love strengthened, they can serve their neighbor and yours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the birth of your Son, who has called people of all times and places into the body of Christ, that is, the Church, we give you thanks for all the believers who have gone before us especially those who have been with us during Christmas and past and are now with you. Give us a sure confidence in your promise of resurrection and eternal life, and bring us at last together with them into your presence at the full coming of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For with your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night on which he was betrayed from the bread, when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Hey, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 